Gandhi started figuring in cartoons very early from his South African days when he was there as a, a barrister. And we all know what he did. So I'm not going into the details of Gandhi's life. It will take too long to describe all of that. I'm not doing what uh, 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 Professor Janaki did, trying to depict a man's life, political life, through cartoons. What I'm trying to do is to make the simple point that Gandhi's presence itself in cartoons is something very unique. He managed to do as much to the cartoonist in the cartoon as cartoonists managed to do to him. This is, it's, a, it's a very interesting way Gandhi, Gandhi was very unique uh, in, the, in many things, including the way he in, in, inhabited the cartoon, the way he influenced the cartoonist as much as the cartoonist influenced him. It's a very unique kind of political presence. Gandhi's presence in cartoons. Apart from the details that you can easily cull out of his cartoons, I am not doing that. Uh, so th this is a, one of the earliest uh, uh, depictions of Gandhi in a 1907 or 06 cartoon, early 20th century in uh, South Africa. Uh, very interesting, even then Gandhi was doing something clearly against the British government and the, and the white man in South Africa, the imperial uh, Great Britain. Uh, but look at the way he had already, in a way, endeared himself to the cartoonist. Uh, he, is, uh, he is shown most empathetically as somebody who is riding an elephant. And his politics is shown as a more organic but difficult to control. The comment that the cartoonist makes is will this man be able to control this rogue elephant? That apart, that is the only negative thing the cartoonist is trying to say about Gandhi. This is right at the beginning of his career. He has started slowly, I mean, creating a zone of empathy for himself and this kind of politics. And uh, this is a message that uh, his politics is very organic as opposed to a very mechanized, uh, steamrolling politics of imperialism. That's what the cartoon says. The very remarkable uh, uh, exchange that takes place between a target of a cartoon and the creator of the cartoon. You will keep seeing this as we go along. And these images, of course, uh, it's not the same Gandhi that we have seen in Abu's cartoons, uh, Shankar's and Lakshman's cartoons. Here you see him more like a barrister. He was already an activist. He was, uh, uh, he was practicing law and he was already active. Uh, he was fighting the government. Uh, yeah, here, you more or less, he is evolving. He's drawn like a typical Indian in uh, in, in, in a mi migrant Indian nation. The cartoon is actually dated. You can see the date, December sixth, nineteen o seven. But again, already the cartoonist is almost on the side of Gandhi. Already, uh, he's. Uh, he's Weak man with an umbrella is overpowering the other guy morally. That's very clear, body language. And again, this is where he completely, as you said, changed his um, look from what he was. This is how he was uh, seen by, since 1907. Uh, this is how he looked. The Indian lawyer, passive resistor, who was yesterday ordered to leave the country within 48 hours. This is the older view of Gandhi and how he looked, began to look from 1921 at Madurai, where he shaved his head, shed the cap and fit to Kathi. He's drawn by that uh, illustrious League of Nations cartoonist called Emery Kell, who used to have a cartoon column in the, in the Hindu in the 70s and 80s, 60s and 70s, I think. This is also an interesting phase in his life. By the time he has already become a, a regular a major political figure, and, um, and this is how uh, the British papers uh, uh, saw him. Uh, Lord Beaverbrook's uh, two papers, the morning paper where Stroop, who used to draw for Daily Express, Stroop presents Gandhi, not very empathetically, as a cartoonist should, very adversarial cartoon, 
throwing his own three monkeys. And, and as a man who is completely oblivious of the chaos he had created behind the, uh, these three monkeys figures, monkey figures, you see a lot of chaos. Uh, but the cartoonist is not questioning the politics or anything. He's not going into the politics of it, but he just says it's produced very adverse consequences. Uh, but here again you see David Lowe, the illustrious David Lowe, showing him totally differently. In the same media house, the same media baron, his evening paper, evening standard. Evening standard had a very liberal, left-leaning cartoonist called David Lowe. And his morning flagship paper, the same proprietor, uh, had this troop. Uh, and Gandhi is seen here as a passing shadow. The round table conference is on. Uh, India was not invited. First round table conference. I think most leaders were in jail. They didn't go. They boycotted. Yeah. They're not there. So he's trying, talking about that, uh, the absolute futility of. of uh, uh, the countries. Again, you see the depiction is almost a uh, kind of saintly figure. And he, this is done by a man who is considered one of the trenchant caricaturists who made Hitler what he was and he could do anything with his figures. A master craftsman. He, in fact, uh, David Lowe was in, uh, been a major influence on all of our uh, pioneers, Shankar, Lakshman. It is Abu's generation that broke away from the Lowe influence. As again, uh, the American uh, cartoonists, they virtually show him as an apparition. You know, it's a kind of holy ghost kind of a thing. How can a politician in Asia was completely opposed to almost every Western value and Western politics. How did he manage to get himself portrayed like this in a medium that is evidently adversarial? We are famous fault finders, we, <laughs> that's our job. But he was a man who somehow endeared himself to cartooning. Uh, it's an interesting question. There again, again, poet Sarojini Naidu called him a Mickey Mouse. He's seen as a comic figure. The point was that he didn't mind being a comic figure. Uh, he, he didn't mind at all being a comic figure. He knew the, the value of being a comic character and that is one day you cease to become a caricature. To become a, a Dennis the Man, sorry, become a booze to congressmen. They are, they, they are more or less favorable depictions. They are comic characters. So, very interesting. This is again, uh, this is another way Indian, Indian cartoonists handled, uh, Shankar handled Gandhi. Again, he, he himself becomes an elephant uh, with a memory. That is the myth. Also, you see the depiction. You see, Gandhi was much shorter than these tall viceroys. They were all six foot six tall people. Gandhi was very short. But what, normally you think the cartoon is shortened the figure when they draw. What Shankar did was he elongated his limbs and made him even taller than the Britisher. You can see that. This is a distortion put to a very dramatic use. This is again his famous Shankar cartoon when the country was facing partition. Again, the whole irony of somebody who stopped a train with an elephant in South Africa is able to, not able to stop the new train that is actually on, probably will collapse. The rails departing, very strong depiction. This is what I just recalling from what happened in 40 years of politics. This is of course somebody's drawing when Gandhi was assassinated. This is another interesting thing, I mean very few, uh, very few, uh, very few political figures continue to feature in cartoons posthumously. Gandhiji has had a very, very active afterlife, which still continues. He's very much there in cartoons. Every cartoonist uh, of any generation, uh, everyone will, in his first or second year professional life, will start drawing Gandhi for various reasons. This is the Maldin cartoon, famous cartoon.
Martin Luther King died. This is, this is a cartoon that has been floating around in the net. It's a, it's a much viewed cartoon. He's equated with Abraham Lincoln. Uh, Martin Luther King is equated with him in turn. This is Abu's classic. Since 1948, since his depiction. Every time there is an occasion, his birth anniversary or death anniversary is most routinely, ritually recalled, and all the cliches float around. And uh, Abu says, you can't, nobody has been able to make out what he was. This is again an Abu cartoon which he did uh, after the, soon after the demolition of the Babri Masjid. When he had retired and he was living in Trivandrum, I think he came back and did this cartoon. Uh, very, very powerful cartoon. Within December 2nd, the demolition happened. This is 30th January. Within a month, a little over a month after the demolition. The point is that most of these cartoons were not Gandhians by any stretch of imagination. I mean, I don't think Abu was a Gandhian, Shankar was not strictly a Gandhian, Vijayan was in one. Somebody like Rajinder Puri had strong objections to Gandhi. But then in the cartoon, when you sat down to do a cartoon, this is what Gandhi did to the cartoonist. He managed to slip into it in a certain way. The image, he even posthumously seems to have a control over his image, which is very close to the kind of politics that he always wanted to project. It's a very interesting uh, way. See again, Ravi Shankar. This is the 100th uh, year of Indian National Congress. 100 years of solitude. The famous Lakshman cartoon when the Tatinburu film came out. It says, very moving, a, con a typical Congress politician is saying, after watching the Gandhi film, very moving. I understand it's a true life picture. Yes. Again, you don't need that. Again, a Lakshman cartoon. This is Kuti. Uh, Kuti has used the Nandalal Bose uh, image uh, of Gandhi. Now, all these cartoons, uh, they, 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 this kind of cartoons that we saw post uh, 1948 after his assassination, all these cartoons are trying to show Gandhi as an ideal that the co contemporary politician is not able to live up to. or contemporary politicians are deviating from. Now you will find something very different, the way Gandhi was done by Vijayan. He made a complete departure from this and showed Gandhi as a political possibility of here and now. He showed Jayaprakash Narayan in the Gandhi guard costume to say that this is the kind of politics that we need today. Gandhi is no longer an ideal, but Gandhi is the kind of politics that we need today. It's a real political option. That is what that is the faith of the cartoon, the vision of the cartoon is. It's very different from saying that he was an ideal, you could only aspire to it, you have deviated from it. Uh, very different. Read this caption. The way he is dressed, he looks a fascist. The Bihar march. The total revolution days of JP. The, the more we think of the frontier, the less we think of Gandhi. Frontier Gandhi. There is a Malayalam version of this cartoon which we joined it for Madhurumi. Same characters, same situation. Indira Gandhi is telling Kafar Gandhi, but other than Gandhi this is Prasad. The current practitioners. This is Gokul, cooperation. He did this cartoon for Asian age. There are people who have probably only read about Gandhi. But Gandhi appears to it's all recent, that's what I'm saying. Every generation, every new cartoonist, even as a cup cartoonist, starts drawing Gandhi. Why does he get into the cartoon even today? That's the question. The Sajid Kumar is there, hiding in some corner. 
Sajit. Very recent cartoon, I think this was drawn probably a couple of weeks back, Sajit. Ten days back, this cartoon. Maybe it's as old as ten days. Hmm. I wanted to take a recent cartoon. In this still to continue, you know. This is again, it's not that everybody was uh, uh, an admirer of Gandhi, there were some very hard critics. This is the, this is the Hindu Mahasabha people, Savarkar and uh, S.P. Mukherjee, showing the entire lot of Congress politicians as Ravana. Gandhi being one, Sardar Patel, Jawaharlal Nehru, Abul Kalam Asad, uh, Netaji, everybody is there. The current dispensation that is running the country may be a little embarrassed about this lineup. <laughs> Many of them, they have owned up. Netaji, <laughs> Sardar Patel. This was published in an RSS uh, publication, I think. Agric or some publication like Mar Maharashtrian publication. This is the famous Bala Sahib Thakere. Bal Thakere. He showed him as a povertarian who was using poverty to advance his politics. Has Thackeray got Bharat Ratna yet? No. When he gets it, we'll run this cartoon. One more little thing about Gandhi. Nobody knows Gandhi's connection with cartoons. Uh, not very well known. Nehru's connection with the cartoon is very well known. We're supposed to have told Shankar that uh, you should not spare me. And he inaugurated the Shankar's Weekly in 1948. Gandhi had a, if you ask me, had a bigger engagement with the cartoon. Many people don't know about it. He was editing a newspaper in, in South Africa where he ran cartoons very prominently. It's called India Opinion, I think. It was, I think, bilingual, uh, sometimes trilingual, English, Gujarati, and, and Hindi. It was for the uh, immigrants, the expat po population. And he was editing it and he ran cartoons very prominently because he knew that this is a medium that can subvert. And he knew that the Western cartoonists were criticizing their governments more or less the same way as he was trying to criticize the British government. The cartoonist was telling them that as good Christians, do you live up to good Christian values? As some people who talk about democracy, are you democratic enough to call in your colonies? And this kind of subversive questioning, you know, questioning them uh, in a manner that they can't quite run away from. That is what he used. That's what appealed to him. Uh, and, and then he found a kind of kinship with cartoonists. He was very much a, he was more of a cartoon, he was as good a cartoon editor as any professional cartoon editor. He ran cartoons very well in those publications. And he came to India in 19... To, 20s and then by 30s when he became a prominent person, Shankar had moved to, from Bombay to Delhi to join Hindustan Times. So they had a great equation. And he had a great equation with all the cartoonists. At the time he was following cartoons very regularly. Shankar was being followed very carefully and when once Shankar drew a cartoon uh, targeting Jinnah, who was no uh, friend of Gandhi's, Gandhi thought it was very unfair and he writes this little note, which I think you can read it. He says, your cartoon on Mr. Jinnah was in bad taste and contrary to facts. You fulfill merely the first test of a cartoonist. Your cartoons are good as works of art, but if they do not speak accurately and do not joke without offending, you will not rise high in your profession. You must study the events. I know that you have an accurate knowledge of them. Your ridicule should never bite. You won't resent this note, yours, Bapu. I, I have not figured out the cartoon. There are a couple of cartoons. I am not sure which of them he was referring to. I am trying to find out. But since I couldn't focus on it, I didn't use it here. There are actually three cartoons at that time. You have to, you have to generally, you know, you circumstantially, you have to corroborate. There is no way somebody can actually authenticate it. So. It must have been some routine cartoon where he must have shown him in uh, Shankar could hit uh, below the belt. But I look at the engagement and I mean this is 
It's not like sending the cop to the... Uh, today the uh, chief minister will send your uh, police uh, to the cartoon. You to send the district collector to sign a uh, preventive arrest warrant or some such thing. And this man really debates. He fights. He's willing to have a debate. I mean, this is... And he's talking, not talking about a cartoon depicting himself. He's talking about a cartoon that attacked his rival politically. I mean, who was creating problems for him in, the, in Congress politics. By any chance, have you found a cartoon that uses Gandhi, which has come from the le uh, the right wing? And if so, what would it be? Do you have any idea? Has there we, been any we, cartoon we, we, we. other than Thackeray that you showed Bal Thackeray? Okay, I, you I showed Bal Thackeray. Bal Thackeray is uh, is also regional, sub-regional, and right wing. Uh, this guy, this is this this cartoon. This is the cartoon. This is a typical. This is a typical right wing cartoon. But is this post forty uh, eight? No, 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 no. When he was very much there, post forty eight, uh, only Thackeray would have done that kind of cartoon. This is when when uh, probably mid forties, nineteen forties. Now the entire Congress uh, is. Almost everybody we know as Congress people or centrist politicians later have been lumped together. The, why I showed this cartoon is some of these people who were nothing to do with the right wing in any manner are being appropriated by the current uh, uh, dispensation and the BJP and so on. And, they have, and the, probably the, those histories will be rewritten. This cartoon will probably be censored by the right wing today. <laughs> A right-wing cartoon will be censored by the right-wing today because it's embarrassing. It's interesting that it brings out the truth or the true nature of the individual. Whether it is, uh, there's even the ca Takare's cartoon, uh, as well as the Gandhi's uh, letter to Shankar, pointing out, that brings out the, for example, when there's uh, He's then asking the Shankar to not to ridicule, but be, because that type of, uh, we can call it moralism, but uh, throughout the Gandhi thing, he has maintained his own type of principles. So he's trying to do. Uh, even uh, when he was assassinated, one of the, uh, uh, if you look at this in, uh, uh, in net, you can see. Uh, that at the time late uh, Matthais, Matthais uh, uh, book on the time is there. M.O. Yeah, M.O. Matthais. Ah, M.O. Matthais book, book is there. There he is, because he said that even uh, something that uh, people got offended was that even if women were ro raped by during the partition, they should resist that type of uh, we may look like uh, almost like a fanatic dedication to the principles that is so flagrant but he's sticking to that and that ca that thing comes out in this cartoon that's a great thing man. thank you thank you for that you know really um, you know interesting tour through history about Gandhi and cartoons but what about yourself did you did you not make any cartoons with Gandhi or, or was that just in your Second year in cartoon school. No, no, no. no. I said you start from the second year. He, okay. It's difficult to push him out of cartoons. I've done hundreds but, of cartoons. I, 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 I thought so. So yeah, would you not show us some of some no, of? I them? normally don't show my own uh, okay. work for, for the simple reason that you can be quite representative. There's so many cartoons I have left out. When I show this, I know any number of Abu cartoons I have left out. I have left out Rajinder Puri altogether. Mario. Right. I mean, Mario has done some Gandhi right. color. So, I mean, it's unfair to bring you in when you have only a very small sample. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, also, my thing is, again, closer to the, to the current days. Right. So, the most interesting thing about Gandhi was even when uh, cartoonists would afford to take him on. By the time I started drawing cartoons, these people started. Then he was already an icon, he was father of the nation. And uh, you could, uh, you could, if at all you wanted to criticize him, you would have had to nuance it. And you have to say that I don't like his economic policy, I don't uh, agree with his vision of uh, the villages and so on, and which, which is what I don't agree as a person. 
many many cartoons may not have agreed with. Uh, I mean, any cartoonist you would see in the press club of India in the evening wouldn't have been a Gandhian. So many of us were in the press club of India. So I mean, nobody would have agreed with his uh, principles of abstinence. I mean, nothing of the kind. The point is, once even as he was getting iconized, how did this man, uh, how did this man appeal to even alien uh, cartoonists and audiences and control his own image? I mean, I'm not saying he actually controlled the image. He created, uh, uh, he, he was, he created some kind of politics where it is extremely difficult to target him as evil or a villain. Uh, when all of that was possible. Later, as a practicing politician, Nehru was criticized, Patel was criticized. Uh, it's not as though Shankar did not criticize Nehru. Shankar was lethal on Nehru uh, on certain counts. Uh, he had even shown uh, nudity and you know, shown Panditji as a nude, I mean, which you don't do today. It's not that they were soft. And Shankar in one cartoon where he uses this October uh, uh, 2nd, Gandhi Jayanti, from Rajagopalachari to A.K. Gopalan. Of course, Gandhi, I mean, Nehru, the entire cabinet, Patel, Bombay, everybody, carrying the charka, the, the spinning wheel on the head, uh, walking on October 2nd, and the cartoon caption is October Revolution. I mean, this thing is, uh, you spin, you know. But you act a content for this slow moving, and he must have been in the 50s, he must have been in a hurry to see things happen in the country. But that kind of a thing. But, Gandhi himself, uh, nobody has been able to really uh, attack uh, and uh, you could easily have done it. What Lohia did for instance, what Lohia said about Gandhi, none of the cartoonists, including uh, Lohia like Rajinder Puri, uh, he was not able to reflect it in a cartoon. When it came to a cartoon, uh, Gandhi was always used as a, some kind of a, either an ideal uh, or some, in my case, in our generation, we used him uh, when things were going wrong, terribly wrong, we would find that Gandhi cartoons abound. Many cartoonists would start drawing Gandhi, then uh, you can easily make out that something is terribly going wrong beyond a political resolution, like Babri Masjid, something atrocious happening. I mean, in that one year, from, from uh, entire 93, after 92 December 6th, 93, the entire year, uh, I was with the Economic Times at the time. At the end of the year, Sadhanand Menon was our art editor, ran a whole page. He said, we'll run a whole art page of cartoons about the year. And he was, his view was that cartoons spoke like nothing else this year. So we sat and picked up cartoons from all over the country. There were hundreds of cartoons, we could only use 20 or 25 of them. The title of that page was, Sadhanam's title was, When the Line Overtook the Word. Uh, that is the year when the line, 1993, the year when the line overtook the word. And these cartoons, if you go through, the point is, about half the cartoons of Gandhi in it. Look at Abu's cartoons, which we just saw, Ram Janmabhumi cartoon. Why does Gandhi keep coming back? I think it's a danger signal. <laughs> He's an alert. <laughs> I was wondering, uh, what are the young, no, more contemporary cartoonists who have, not, if not criticized, comment, commented on Gandhi's view on caste and, you know, like in some, many African countries they felt that he was racist. So those kind of things have any cartoonists commented or reflected on? The one problem with cartooning is that unless it's all part of current news or discussion, if somebody draws a cartoon, it won't be understood. So these things are not part of mainstream or uh, talk or discussion. Once that happens, I think there will be such cartoons. You know, bar on drawing cartoons against Gandhi. And in any case, in today's India, why would the cartoonist speak on Gandhi? Unless there are two historians here, sociologists, you are able to make uh, connections to Gandhi in uh, more critical ways. And if it all becomes part of common reading, then we can probably look at a Gandhi in a more critical light. As a, in a way, this is a continuation. Mm. I mean, if, if one is talking about the presence of Gandhi, mm. then the absence is really of Ambedkar. Mm. And one of the things in this show is that 
it's interesting. I mean, if we were to look for cartoons that Abu did of Ambedkar, uh, I came across a very old one that's been published in a book, which is actually a critique of cartooning. Mm. Very interesting book that's been done. Uh, you're talking about the laughing, uh, this, uh, you're talking about the collection of cartoons on Ambedkar, that yeah. study. Yeah, that yes. I have, I have no, I yes. la, So uh, then uh, one of them, it's signed Abraham, uh, uh, that's the only one. Uh, I reviewed signed. the book for the Express. I, I have a copy I of the see. book, I, I know see. the book. Yeah. But I mean, book. it's interesting that, you know, uh, I mean, uh, that is an absence, seen from today. Yeah. So, th I mean, this is of course 22 years after yeah. Abu passed away, but uh, that is an absence. No, but that's again happening. That's not entirely an absence. If you look at cartoons in the last uh, 10 or 15 years, 10 years specifically, when this government came, there have been any number of cartoons on Ambedkar. Constitution uh, on Ambedkar Day. Again, it's become relevant in a certain way. Again, the way Gandhi is being used, uh, Ambedkar will populate cartoons much more in the days to come. Because when Constitution is being attacked, and many people think that the courts are probably our last resort or refuge or whatever. Uh, then Ambedkar will figure in Ambedkar has already started figuring in cartoons. We have all become experts at drawing Ambedkar. <laughs> Abu probably wasn't able to draw because at the crucial time I think he, he went, by the time he went to uh, Delhi, the um, Ambedkar as a direct politician his influence had already waned I think and then he went to London. Uh, had he been around a little more, uh, somebody like Abu, Abu's the thing is that Abu had a wide angle, he would pan. Uh, very few cartoonists had this kind of panning vision. You know? He would pick up all kinds of things. From, I mean, it's a very interesting vision. That's why that when the country's politics is federating, uh, two cartoonists excel. One was Kutti and then Abu. Uh, I mean, they could pick up any state leaders. I mean, they could handle 30, 40 caricatures easily, even from memory. That's all because they saw that the country's politics was federating. It was very Indira centric at the same time there were lots of players around. This was first picked up by Kutti when Nehru's post Nehruvian politics, the fact that the states were gaining ascendancy, Anna Dure, Hairon, uh, BC Roy, that kind of politics, early federal politics. But Ambedkar will certainly come back. Uh, bad news again. <laughs> നമ്മുടെ <laughs> 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 Adistana Vera Maya Uru 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 Sana Pangu Eka and Undown, Vaina Kariwit. I think Vaina Karka Manasila. Abo Anganuru Randari Trunda, Yanganuru Artha Lunda, which you are going to debate in the which is a language of Sambado, Vivado, and the Gandhi and the Ganganichi three can be two. A little Gandhi Padiwarnit and the Gari. Pinavari, I don't do a thesis in the value of Moka person or in the value of logic cartoon that the Gundra and Betlan. Number of other Mogundal on the cartoon that the Gundra and Betlan. It's a statement in midday. I'm going to parameter. I'm going to work in the craft of a poor editorial of a reason is to carry in Baray, Petrapanga, Varanuel Jadi, the Garitil Gandhi, but I'm going to complicate and sign your cartoon to Kundra, a Patilan in Parilla. Julius Pfeiffer and the Capernula cartoon still would be very dear Vijayan of Kaichis and Vitri Naram Bokitri Zarshan and Norni Vijayan, Adidra of the Kalta Kalagam Vilichi, the cartoon or law. Julius Pfeiffer village voice, which is a great cartoon, 1970s, 80s. They look up other sequential cartoon, a present under Kadavar in the Valley and a Param. And the cartoon will be put to a regime, but the other Idoka Varki and Ungile, Namada Vayana Kadim Kadinduru in the Guru. Spooling go and the Gilkitan, by an acar can get a tonal on down, or they would be huge again in Tonanum. I'm going to underage the cartoon work you. 